You're listening to the Telltale Channel. Don't forget to check me out on all social media, Patreon, Twitter, Teespring, and Etsy. All links can be found in the description or on my website, telltaleatheist.com. Well, I've got some bad news for everybody. Prayer Warriors made an announcement recently. The Prayer Warrior effort has been led by two main people, a dude named Dutch Sheets and another named Frank Amedia. Apparently, a prophecy came to Dutch Sheets in a dream, and he couldn't wait to announce it. They put out a call for a special prayer session from 12.30 a.m. to 3 a.m. on Wednesday morning to wage spiritual warfare against Valkyrie, which is, in his words, quote, the plan to take back America by stealing the election. He announced that his dream outlined a strategy to defeat Valkyrie. Here's what he said about it. Quote, As Christ's ecclesia on earth, we've been delegated his supreme authority to declare into the spiritual realm what is lawful and what is unlawful, forbidden and allowed. We have been given Christ's keys with which to close doors no one can open, and open doors no one can close. According to his instructions, we join together in unity across our nation tonight, from the first state to the last in order to end Valkyrie's plot to steal America's 2020 election. We decree with the angel of the Lord, and using his very words, join him in decreeing that when the clock strikes 3 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time, Valkyrie will fall and will not sing. The plot will end. We declare our prayers are causing the witchcraft and the curse to bounce back on the sender. We decree that the commander's judgments are supreme, and we decree that the scales of justice will now tip and become perfectly balanced. We decree the next four years of Donald Trump's presidency will see the fruit of God's divine reset in America. We will experience a third great awakening. We will return to our ancient paths and foundations, including being a voice of the gospel of the kingdom to all the earth, and America's heart will be captured once again by her creator, Yahweh. End quote. They will bounce back on the sender? Like an email? These people are getting more deranged and delusional as time goes on. I'm really not sure what to do about it, but I can tell you this. Watching these people disintegrate is more entertaining than it's ever been. Well, it would be if our democracy and lives weren't at stake. Ever wonder what it looks like to see a full-blown QAnon supporter talk about their conspiracy theories? Pastor Johnny Enloe, QAnon believer extraordinaire, went on the YouTube channel Elijah Streams recently to talk about the election and what happens next. Here's what he said. There is an aspect of this um, that even by December 13th, people saying, "Why we're running out of time. December 14th, the electoral... Right. We hear that all the time. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't... Really? It, it doesn't matter because there is actually there is an expectation of the electoral college college turning it over to Biden. I'll say that this is I'm just going to tell you that uh, the Trump side, they have that in mind. They're prepared for that. If it has to go that far, it's OK, because that just puts the trees in it at an official legal level by doing that. And it and it and it makes certain high individuals um more it makes them guilty at another level and there is an emergency order from 2018 that this nation is operating under and they literally are going to go down as uh, traitors and you know if you go to the extreme case they they can be it's executable it's not even that the supreme court's the last level really it's really they it you know it, it has to be done before january 20th but if you are don't you, are are you referring to if Supreme Court isn't the highest level? Are you referring to tribunals as the highest level? No, they are the highest level from a standpoint of judicial. But there are we are actually under emergency uh, executive, executive order. order, emergency executive kind of state of war, and President Trump literally has the right to, uh, to put the whole nation under martial law to take wow. all social media where he doesn't have to have fake news taking his message and not allowing it to get out there. He has legal rights to do that at any time. How do you get to this point with delusions? It is so strange to listen to somebody who really believes this shit. There's an extremism gradient here. Nobody starts out believing all of it. As they read more and more about the conspiracies, they gradually accept more and more absurd stuff. There's a logical progression behind all of it. One logical step leads to the next, until you've left facts and logic behind completely. It's fascinating to see the end result of the QAnon extremism gradient, and it's sad. 
Pastor Todd Coconato is very upset at the fact that Trump lost the election. So upset, in fact, that he's pretending it didn't happen at all. A trend we've seen from a lot of people recently. He had some interesting things to say about it on his YouTube channel. He said, quote, is Trump going to win? I think that as we pray, something happens. God responds. Should we accept our defeat and move on to the next thing? He says, absolutely not opposite. Pray, 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 pray without ceasing. Believe, have faith, trust. If the Lord is saying that, that means it's not done. I think it's going to be such a miracle and a sign and wonder. Now get this because this is important. I believe it's going to be such a miracle, sign, and wonder as this takes place that the people that, even the godless, even the atheists, are going to look and say, wow, look at the God they serve. Look at the God they serve. Because people are going to say it was impossible. They're going to say there was no way. They're going to say, you know, absolutely not it'll never happen and then what god does when he moves they're going to see and look and say wow and i believe it's going to bring people to salvation end quote atheists are going to turn christian they'll say look at the god they serve this sounds like some bizarre biblical quote Atheists don't believe God exists at all. You can't just pick and choose which gods you'd rather worship. I swear, I don't know how people get more delusional than this, but I'm interested to find out. I'm so sorry for these people. Honestly, they're not living in the same reality as us. Eventually, we're going to have to deal with this problem. But in the meantime, I guess we can use it for its entertainment value. Remember Michelle Bachman, nutcase member of Congress for a while? Professional Karen talked about smashing a clay jar recently. I ask, oh God, that you would take your iron rod and I ask that you would smash the clay jar of deceit in America. Smash the clay jar of delusion in the United States of America. Smash the delusion, Father, of Joe Biden as our president. He is not. Yeah. Would you take your iron rod and smash the strong delusion that Nancy Pelosi does have her House of Representatives? We don't know that. Smash it in Jesus' name. Smash, Lord, the takeover of the U.S. Senate by Chuck Schumer. Lord, smash it with your iron rod. Well, she's back in the news. Since her first request went so well, she thought she'd ask God for more shit. In a new video, she said, quote, we ask you, O oh God, for deliverance that our country may continue to know freedom. Would you deliver various local and state races, Father, that they aren't stolen? And O oh God, I personally ask from myself, Michelle Bachman, Lord, would you allow Donald Trump to have a second term as president of the United States? End quote. Did she think the personal request was going to work because she stated her name? And why does she keep putting O oh before God's title? O oh God, O oh Lord, O oh Father. This is fucking bizarre. I honestly don't even know what to do with this information. Well, I guess we just have to sit back and wait to see what God does. If he came to earth tomorrow, proved to us that he was really God, and installed Trump as the leader, well, honestly, nothing would change for me, probably. I wouldn't want to worship a moral monster like that anyways. Some of you might know Pastor Stephen Andrew. Back in March, he blamed the coronavirus on LGBT sin. Honestly, the only surprising part about this is the fact that more of them don't come out and say it. We all know they're thinking it. Anyways, he released some election-related opinions recently. He said, quote, We need to stand up for President Trump. We know that God's will is President Trump. Look, President Trump is pro-life. He loves America. He boldly says, In God we trust and plays God bless the USA, and he helps the economy recover. He's wise, and this helps the poor people. So God's will is for President Trump. On the other hand, we see Joe Biden and the Democrats. They remove God from the Pledge of Allegiance, and that means that people following Joe Biden are cursed. If you want to be cursed, then go ahead and defend Joe Biden and the devil. End quote. So suddenly they give a shit about the poor? Republicans are against social programs that help the poor. They're against tax breaks for the poor. They've historically done things solely to help the rich. Democrats never tried to remove God from the Pledge of Allegiance. Joe Biden is constantly talking about God and asking him to bless the troops. These people live in a delusion, and they're doing everything they can to build a narrative that's most favorable to Trump. The guy who makes fun of evangelicals. The guy who's had like 16 divorces and extramarital affairs. 
swears. The guy who swears constantly and makes fun of people. The billionaire. You know, the group of people that God said would never get into heaven. Why are they so dead set on making somebody so antithetical to their values the president? Even suspending democracy to do it. When they have a genuine, God-fearing man who actually won the election, Joe Biden. I don't like the fact that he's a believer, but it is what it is. Joe Biden takes religion way more seriously than Trump. This should serve as evidence that these people don't actually care about the candidate's moral values. They care about whether or not they can further their goals. The hypocrisy is palpable. Hey, Telltale. I was part of a cult from about age 8 to 25, and even though I'm not part of it anymore, it feels wrong not to have somebody like manipulating me or abusing me all the time. And this has actually led to me starting toxic relationships with people. And I know this feeling of shame is not from like a higher power or a cult leader, but it just feels wrong that I'm not serving anybody because that's all I've known my whole life. And I was wondering if you could help somebody like me who never really developed their own personality and had only the cult personality. All right. Thanks. Hi. Sorry, guys. There's a cat sitting down in my lap right now. I appreciate the phone call. Really interesting question. I noticed a similar problem with myself where I would find myself praying for no reason. Or when I was little, I was afraid of the dark, as all kids are. And my mom told me, if you just say Jehovah's name, it makes the demons shudder and Satan can't get you. There are demons in your bedroom, she said. They're there. They're not monsters, they're demons, and they're watching you at all times. Which, by the way, is also the reason why I never spoke my greatest fear out loud, because then Satan would hear it and he'd make it happen. But that's a story for another day. As a result, I would walk into my pitch black room, being afraid of demons in there, saying, Jehovah, 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 over and over again, because I believed that it would protect me from demons. And growing up, getting a lot older, that behavior was programmed into me. My mom used to give us a tackle box, like, you know, a fishing tackle box with a flashlight and a Bible in it. And if we had a nightmare, we were supposed to open it and start reading the Bible and we'd be protected. She believed that we were particularly susceptible to Satan's influence because my dad used to practice black magic when we were little. Like, before he was a Jehovah's Witness. Like, give me a fucking break. Are you kidding me? Like, none of this is real. It's so absurd to look back on now. But, as a result, that shit was programmed into me from a very young age. And I have struggled my entire life to get past that. My entire life to not worry that there were demons in my bedroom or whatever. Once I became an atheist, all that pretty much fell away. But the desire or the, the program to continue saying Jehovah, Jehovah, Jehovah constantly or praying before I went to sleep or whatever, that shit was still there and is still there to some degree. It, it's a challenge to get past it, but... With time, I have managed to. So give it time and, and do your best to work those feelings out of yourself because it's not right. They don't belong there. They were programmed in. It's not part of your authentic personality. Now, as far as finding what your authentic personality is, that's a little bit more complicated. I would recommend you find some kind of a hobby that interests you some kind of anything that catches your interest, something that you can do and explore that area. In my case, it was retro video games. I don't know if you guys can see behind me, but uh, that's my game collection back there. I found a hobby that I absolutely love, and I have spent an ungodly amount of time building that up over so many years, getting behind those shelves and running wires and connecting little cheap like $10 LED strips that I cut, a, cut apart and built wire sets for and everything. That entire collection honestly isn't even worth that much. Like most of the games in there are 25 cents from Goodwill. It's all in the amount of time and care that I put into displaying them. That's a hobby 
that I really care about, that I really love, that has taken up a lot of my time, like all of my free time over five, six, seven years has gone into building this up because I absolutely love it. The point is explore your interests. Explore what keeps you going. Find find what would keep you going. You've got to figure out what gets you interested, what what catches your attention and explore it. There are no more cults in your life to define what interests you anymore. That's your job. So figure it out now that you're free to. Yeah, so Owen, this is Peyton from South Carolina. I was wondering, how easy can it be for ex-cult members to fall back into that behavior or even fall back into another cult? Thanks for listening, and I love the show, Matt. Keep up the good work. Appreciate that. Really interesting question. Something that I've noticed with cults, more specifically with cult members, is the fact that people have a tendency to jump between extremist groups. For example, you'll find Jehovah's Witnesses jump from, like when they leave the religion, they'll jump from Jehovah's Witnesses to like Mormonism, for example, or Catholicism, because giving up that cult mindset is difficult. There is a difference between realizing that something is fake and leaving and leaving that mindset behind. People carry that mindset with them out of the religion a lot of the time. Now, there, a lot of cults actually teach the members that every other religion out there is fabricated. It's all made up. It's bullshit. You shouldn't go to these other religions. They're false religions, and Satan got his hooks in you if you do. You can be disfellowshipped for going to a worldly church as a Jehovah's Witness. So I think in a lot of cases, Jehovah's Witnesses specifically tend to turn atheist because they believe, well, if this isn't the truth, then nothing is the truth. If, if anybody has the, th- the truth, it's Jehovah's Witnesses. That's the tendency toward the belief. But they don't leave the mindset behind. They carry it with them. They carry an extremist belief system with them out the door. They carry extremist behavior, shunning people who disagree with them, uh, shutting down conversations that they don't want to talk about or they think are wrong or whatever. They can't take criticism. That's one of the big problems when people leave cults, is carrying that mindset with them. Hi, this is Kobe from uh, New Jersey. Um, I was wondering, who do you think, if you could choose one or like maybe two or three, who would you say are the craziest like pastures or like even like right wing pundits that you've ever like listened to or had to watch? Um, Kyle Kalinske from Secular Talk did a top 10 list of his uh, years ago. And I was wondering uh, what yours were. Like a few examples would be like Michael Savage or Rick Wiles or Brian Fisher or like even Michelle Bachman. So yeah, I was wondering what your uh, thoughts on that were. I appreciate that. Honestly, it's really hard to tell. It's it's hard to put it into a list. And the reason for that is because you've got to draw a distinction between the most bizarre beliefs or the most harmful beliefs. When you think about it, the Christian belief system itself is fucking bizarre. Just everything about the Bible, everything you find in the Bible is fucking bizarre. But there are some pastors who build on that bizarre belief system and make it even weirder. For example, Kat Kerr. I've talked about her a little bit. She's a pastor and a, oop, there goes the cat, and a prophetess who believes that she can literally go to heaven and touch God's hair and hang out with God and talk to him and and believes that there's like a body requisition warehouse, like a body part. If you lose a limb, like you lose an arm or a leg or something and you pray to God, there's an angel there ready to go to the warehouse and get a new limb from God to give to you. As if this has ever happened before, like, 
limbs don't spontaneously regrow like that. I don't know, it's just really fucking strange. So as far as bizarre belief goes, I would say Cat Kerr is probably number one on the list. But there are other pastors out there who are more harmful than bizarre. A lot of the pastors that I follow are very similar in their belief system. They're all kind of a branch of Pentecostalism, like Kenneth Copeland and Benny Hinn and, and all of the televangelists, Jerry Falwell and, and all of them. They all have very, very similar belief systems, and they're all very harmful people. So I would say that would be my list of just a few. I do feel like giving some honorable mentions, though. Um, there are, is a new wave of pastors right now who believe in the QAnon conspiracy theory. That's pretty fucking bizarre. So Johnny Enlow and Mark Taylor are two really prominent QAnon pastors that I've been following for a while. Those guys should probably make the list, too. So if I had to boil it down to a list of, say, five pastors, it would be um, Kat Kerr, Kenneth Copeland, Mark Taylor, Rick Wiles, and Johnny Enlow. Those would be the five. Uh, those people are bizarre. As a side note, I do want to mention I used to watch Kyle Kalinske a lot. Been watching him for years, probably six, seven years. I was his patron for a long time. I gave him like a dollar every month for years. I've been watching him since his channel was as big as my channel is now. And um, I've stopped watching him now, sadly, because I feel like he's largely gone off the deep end with a lot of stuff. And I don't know. He's just, he's moving further to the right than I'm comfortable with. I'm really a big fan of David Pakman. I feel like Sam Cedar is kind of a drama merchant, although I do agree with much of his politics. I, and I do still watch his channel, and I watch Kyle Kalinske's channel too sometimes. But I've largely given up on Kalinske. Now I just stick to Pakman and a little bit of Sam Cedar, not a lot. Let's take a look at Super Chats. Carla Berger, what is your favorite N64 game? It's a good question. It's a tough question. Um, generally speaking, I think the Nintendo 64 is, an, is a very dated system. It was revolutionary at the time because it was Nintendo's jump into the 64-bit era. I'm sorry. It was Nintendo's jump into the 3D era and 64-bit era. But largely, all of the games fucking suck, honestly. I hate to say it. The games are just terrible. Mario Kart 64 was a bad game. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. Mario Kart 64 was a bad fucking game. That's just what it is. GoldenEye 007, bad fucking game. It was awful. It was a terrible game. It was awesome at the time. Fucking terrible now. It's impossible to play. It's impossible to play almost any N64 game. I tried picking up Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, the Zelda games, the two big Zelda releases for the N64. Can't fucking play them. They're terrible. I mean, the graphics are insufferable. Awesome plot line, awesome puzzles, awesome games all around. Graphics are... The graphics make them unplayable. That being said, I do still enjoy Smash Bros. a lot. The N64 version. That one aged well, in my opinion. And actually, my favorite N64 game that I own in my collection is probably StarCraft 64. I don't like playing it. I like owning it. I think it's fucking awesome. It's one of the rarest games for the N64. Very expensive, and I'm so proud to own it. I think it's such a cool addition to the collection. Because I played the shit out of N... Uh, I'm sorry. Because I played the shit out of StarCraft one when I was a, a, a little kid, you know, like in the early 2000s. Played that so much. Absolutely loved that game. So the fact that I own it on N64 is fucking awesome. Couldn't be happier about that. The rarest game that I own is Jack Bros for the Virtual Boy, and I own the manual to it too. If you're wondering about that one, you can go look that up on eBay and see what that's worth. It is worth significantly more than it was when I bought it. 
The biggest of Chungai. In your opinion, outside of death cults, what cult or religion is the most harmful to individual members? That's an interesting question, and it varies heavily, and I'll tell you why. Think of it this way. With viruses, with like actual viruses, the more deadly the virus is, the harder it is to spread. So, for example, Ebola has like a 90% mortality rate, and it makes it very difficult to spread it to other people since it's killing off its hosts. Viruses that have a lower death rate spread easier. They are directly connected. The death rate and the R0 number, I think is what it's called. How easy it is to, to spread. They're directly connected to each other. COVID is the perfect balance between very deadly, but not too deadly, to not spread very far. It spreads like wildfire, and it's also fairly fucking deadly. That's why it's such a scary virus. It's like a nightmare virus. With HIV, for example, you can just not do anything and not catch it. If you don't, you have to actually take an action to go out and catch the, you know, HIV, for example. COVID, you, you know, it's airborne. You can be walking by somebody on the street and fucking catch it practically. Of course, that's an extremely rare circumstance. I'm just saying. To bring it back, cults work the same way. If there is a high social cost to joining, or a high financial cost even, then it's harder to get people to join. But the more that they have invested in the religion or in the group, the more enthusiastic they're going to be. Take, for example, Scientology. There is a high social and economic cost to joining. So they don't bring in as many members as a cult that's less obviously a cult. They don't bring in as many, but the people that they do bring in are die-hard, enthusiastic believers. Jehovah's Witnesses try to hide some of the crazier aspects of their belief system until the sunken costs fallacy kicks in. Until a year in when you get baptized, that's when they really start piling on the craziness. Scientology requires an, a, a high upfront cost to join. That's why Scientology has 50,000 members and Jehovah's Witnesses have 8.7 million or something now. So to answer your question more directly, what cult or religion is the most harmful to individual members outside of death cults? The smaller cults are usually the, the, the most dangerous and harmful to individual members. I would say the NIFB is up there. The NIFB is, is abusive and dangerous and angry and, and just awful all the way around. And it's fairly small. Even compared to Scientology, it's very small. I don't think they have more than three or 4,000 members across all of their churches, as far as I know. So that, that would have to be my answer for the U.S., there are other cults outside the U.S. and even within the U.S. that are more dangerous, but that's just the one that came off the top of my head. When we come back, we're going to talk about Pastor Todd Coconato saying that atheists will say, wow, look at the God that they serve after he reverses the election result. So give us 30 seconds and we'll be right back. You're listening to the Telltale Channel. Don't forget to check me out on all social media, Patreon, Twitter, Teespring, and Etsy. All links can be found in the description or on my website, telltaleatheist.com. So the first article I wanted to look at is entitled, Pastor, After God Overturns the Election Results, Atheists Will Finally Convert. This is on the Friendly Atheist website by Hemant Mehta. So let's give the article a read and see what it says. Pastor Todd Coconato is a Christian member of the MAGA cult who routinely interviews the kind of evangelicals who surround Donald Trump. 
In recent weeks, he's spoken with John MacArthur. That's another one I forgot to mention earlier in my list of pastors that are complete fucking nutcases. John MacArthur. Paula White and Michelle Bachman. That's why it's worth listening to his recent delusion he offered while filming in his car, because a bunch of other Trump cultists take him seriously. Couldn't agree more. Could not agree more with him and Meta. We have to talk about these people. We, we have no option. We have to talk about these nutcases. Even if they seem fringe, they're not. They are not fringe. These, this guy talks to congressmen. Seriously. We have to pay attention to these people. It's a problem. So let's listen to his video and see what he had to say. Just so back to the question, is Trump going to win? I think that as we pray, something happens. God responds. And when I ask the Lord, what should we do? Should we, should we stop praying? Should we accept our defeat and move on to the next thing? He says, absolutely not. Opposite. Pray, pray, pray. Pray without ceasing. I find that fascinating because other people are getting the exact opposite message from God. God is telling other people, vote against Trump. He is evil. He's the Antichrist. Vote Biden in. Who's right? Who's right? And how do we tell? Notice the guy's wearing a Trump 2020 hat also. Let's keep listening. Pray without ceasing. Believe. Have faith. Trust. So that's what I'm getting from God. And so that gives me encouragement in my spirit because if the Lord is saying that, that means it's not done. You see, you understand me, saints? That means it's not done. Because if it were done, then I think God would be telling me, you know what, just move on or you know, move on to the next thing. You know, not only are we sitting here wondering why God is giving him this message and somebody else the exact opposite message, but I'm honestly starting to wonder how he knows the difference between God speaking to him and genuine mental illness, like genuine delusion. How do we tell the difference? Do you know the criteria required to diagnose somebody as schizophrenic? Some of the criteria include audible or visual hallucinations. I think more than three per month or something like that. How do we know this guy isn't just schizophrenic? Or more specifically, how does he know he's not schizophrenic? How do we make that determination? Now, I wouldn't give a shit if this was some nobody. He can work out his own mental health issues between himself and his therapist. But he interviews congressmen and massive megachurch pastors with tens of thousands of followers. This is a problem. What are we going to do about these people? Let's keep listening. You know, move on to the next thing. You've entered into a new season and everybody needs to be prepared for the persecution. Now, does that mean there won't be tough times ahead? No. Does that mean there won't be persecution? No. These people bizarrely love to be persecuted. They have to be persecuted because the Bible says they will be. Even though th this guy specifically lives in a majority white country, majority Christian country, he has... He is the definition of privilege, Christian privilege, if no other. And he's talking about being persecuted. Are you fucking kidding me? This is a fucking joke. They have to imagine that they're persecuted because it fuels that enthusiasm. It burns that enthusiasm. That's what they need. They need the persecution complex. Let's keep listening. Does that mean there won't be persecution? No. But what it means is simply this. He has not told me to stop praying. Why would God tell you to stop praying? Has that ever happened? That's a little bit concerning to me. Um, is he, are you saying that he wants you to stop bothering him? That's kind of fun. Has that happened before? That's interesting to me. I believe that he's moving on our behalf in some way, shape, or form. And I believe that this is a war that we're going to have to pray this through, pray this through, until the very end here, but I do believe we're gonna see God move on our behalf, and I think it's gonna be such a miracle and sign and wonder. Now get this, because this is important. Get this, because this is important. I believe it's gonna be such a miracle sign and wonder as this takes place, that the people that even the godless, even the atheists 
are going to look and say, wow, look at the God that they serve. Look at the God that they serve. Okay, I I'm sorry. I got to stop you there, buddy. This sounds like some shit right out of the Bible. Seriously, this sounds like a Bible verse. Like, uh, God performs some massive miracle, Old Testament God, and the non-believers saw this amazing miracle and, and said to themselves, I know I've been worshiping, I don't know, Ra or whatever other fucking bizarre God that they worshiped back then. But my God couldn't do that. I mean, I can physically talk to my God, but their God could blah, blah, blah. That's what this sounds like. So I'm leaving my God and going over to your God because your God is more powerful than mine. That's what this sounds like, seriously. That's not the world we live in. I don't think this dude knows what an atheist is. We, we straight up don't fucking believe in your God. I haven't seen a lick of evidence that, that any God exists. Any God, let alone your one very specific God. The moment I see evidence, I'll believe it, period. The fact that God himself has not been able to provide evidence for me should be a sign. Why not? Why isn't he just sending a message to everybody in their heads just right now? Hey guys, I'm God. I'm real. I, I exist. Believe in me and worship me now. Why doesn't he do that? Why is he playing hide and fucking seek? There is a problem in this country that is going to have to be dealt with. These people are brainwashed to a degree I didn't know was possible. And we're going to have to figure out how to reverse that. Look at the God that they serve. Look at the God that they serve. Because people are going to say it was impossible. They're going to say there was no way. There was, they're going to say, you know, absolutely not. It'll never happen. And then what God does when he moves, they're going to see and look and say, wow. And I believe it's going to bring people to salvation. And I believe it's going to bring people to salvation. If he came down from heaven right now and stood in front of me and said, hey, I'm God, and then performed a miracle to prove it. If he arranged the stars in the sky to say I exist or something like that, I would believe it instantly. I have never seen a lick of evidence that would ever imply that God is real. Not one bit. And honestly, with that being said, God knows who I am, right? He knows my psychology. He knows exactly what it would take to convince me that he's real. And he would be able to do it because he's all-knowing. So why doesn't he just fucking do it? Why all of this hide-and-seek shit? Seriously. Let's keep reading the article. This is Hemant Mehta speaking. If the election results are overturned, it won't be a sign from God. It'll be a sign of our broken democracy and Republican leaders' inability to put country ahead of their own party and ego. But so far, even Republicans haven't been willing to overturn the results to prop up a sinking ship. That news hasn't reached members of the MAGA cult, though. These people are a lost cause. The more pressing question is how many of their followers will eventually accept that they're being played by these same religious leaders. Well said, Hemant Mehta. I completely agree with that. It's like, I think only 23 out of hundreds of Republican leaders in D.C. have acknowledged Biden's victory. I don't even know what to do with that information. It's so fucking disappointing to me. I mean, we've been watching for weeks people talk about overturning and destroying democracy. For weeks, we've been listening to pastors who previously were all about the Constitution, how much they love the Constitution, constitutional rights and this and that and Second Amendment and the First Amendment and every other fucking amendment unless it disagrees with them. Suddenly, they are anti-Constitution. They want to rip it up and install a fucking dictator. They suddenly don't like democracy anymore when they think that the dictator that may rise to power will be on their side. This is stranger than the alternate reality that I could have imagined. Let's take a look at Super Chats. 
Zolfner, pro on Super Smash Bros. Oh, that's fucking awesome. That's that's really cool, actually. Which Smash Bros? Is it uh, the 64 one or is it Ultimate? Super uh, Smash Bros. Ultimate is actually gaining a huge following. Melee for the GameCube was really, really, really popular. It was considered one of the best tournament competitive Smash Bros. versions for a long time, and I have it over there. But um, I think Ultimate's actually taking its place as one of the most popular. And Ultimate's a really good one, the, the one that released for the Switch. I really like it. Original Smash is very good, too. But one of the big problems that Nintendo hadn't really worked out until recent releases is the fact that the characters weren't really well balanced in the original and in Melee. There were some characters that were just obnoxiously overpowered. Um, I think Kirby was one of the most powerful in the original Smash, and I don't remember who it was in the melee version but anyways there there was not very good balance between the characters that was the main problem i really liked ultimate because it had cloud from final fantasy 7 in it i think that's fucking awesome i fucking love final fantasy 7 julie w five dollars thank you i appreciate that very much more than you know seriously you guys don't have to do any of this you guys don't have to donate or anything i couldn't possibly express to you how glad i am that you guys are here and how much i appreciate you coming and donating and hanging out while i stream it's really cool and i missed you guys so much i was off for like two weeks and i just was crawling out of my skin heather rose is our flyer fifty dollars thank you so much you have no idea how much i appreciate that i agree 100 percent about kyle and jimmy door yeah i agree about jimmy door too he's gone off the deep end hard sadly my go-to's are bow the fifth column love bow the fifth column the rational national never heard of him until earlier tyler cross mentioned him the humanist report he's okay Mike Figueredo, I think is his name. I haven't watched him in a while, but he's, you know, he's so-so. I've watched a little bit, and I like what he has to say when I listen. Uh, Thought Slime? Don't know Thought Slime. Never heard of them. And of course, me! Thank you so much! That's fucking awesome! Ex-Pentecostal-esque cult survivor here. First Christian Fellowship Ministries International. God damn! Interesting. I'm gonna have to look more into that group. I'm glad you escaped. That's really good news. And I'm glad you're here. And you know, not stuck in that still, afraid to look at dissenting information. That's really, really good news. So anyway, thank you for the super chat very much. Lisa Leitner, you do great work. Thank you. I appreciate that. Steven Collette, another like sticker. I swear I didn't know those that those were a thing until recently. Zolfner, look up Axe on Melee. I'll take a look. I will. I'll do that. I'll set a reminder and look after the stream. Let's take a short break. When we come back, we're going to talk about Michelle Bachman making a fool of herself over the election results. Again. So give us 30 seconds and we'll be right back. You're listening to the Telltale Channel. Don't forget to check me out on all social media. Patreon, Twitter, Teespring, and Etsy. All links can be found in the description or on my website, telltaleatheist.com. So the next article I wanted to take a look at is by Beth Stoneburner on the Friendly Atheist website. Title is Michelle Bachman, God, will you allow Donald Trump to have a second term? It gets fucking bizarre. So let's give it a read and see what it says. In a movie that shows just how desperate the right is becoming, I'm sorry, in a move that shows just how desperate the right is becoming, former Minnesota Congresswoman Michelle Bachman who said just before the election that Donald Trump would win the presidency because God already called it in heaven, is now pleading with God to give Trump a second term. Okay, let's just watch this clip of Michelle Bachman. This is the original clip, the one that she put, put out right after the election ended, or was called for Joe Biden, just completely fucking disintegrating at the fact that Biden won. Let's watch it. I ask, oh God. Oh, God. Not not God, but oh, God. We're going to cover that again in a second. Let's keep listening. I ask, oh, oh God, God, that you would take your iron rod and I ask that you would smash the clay jar of deceit in America. Smash the clay jar of delusion in the United States of America. You're going to have to start here, honestly, with this chick. 
you're gonna have to start smashing the clay jar of delusion right here. Yeah. Smash the delusion, father, of Joe Biden as our president. He is not. Yeah. Would you take your iron rod and smash the strong delusion that Nancy Pelosi does have her House of Representatives? We don't know that. Smash it in Jesus' name. Smash, Lord, the takeover of the U.S. Senate by Chuck Schumer. Lord, smash it with your iron rod. I just... I. I... I feel so bad for this woman because she is obviously in a bad place in her life right now or something. I, I, I don't even know, dude. Like, she's she's got deep issues right now that need to be resolved. It's very sad, really. So she released another video just the other day talking about this subject. So let's give this video a watch and she and, and see what she said. For this moment in the United States, we seriously, sincerely cry out to you, confessing our personal sins. We confess the sins of our country as proxies. We ask you, oh God, for deliverance. Again, oh God. Why is she saying, oh God? Why did she say, I ask, oh God? We are asking, oh God. Why is she putting O oh before everything? That's fucking weird. Is it just me? Why is she doing that? It's that our country may continue to know freedom. That our country may continue to know freedom as people like Michael Flynn are, are actually literally calling for Trump to instate martial law. She's saying she wants to retain freedom by keeping Trump for a second term. When he lost... The delusion is all on one side of the fucking table. Lord, would you deliver these races in Georgia? Oh, Father. Again, oh, Father. Oh, God. Oh, Lord. Why? This is fucking weird. Would you deliver various local and state races, Father, that they aren't stolen? Would you give us a true vote? And, oh, God, I personally ask from myself, Michelle Bachman. Okay, so getting serious here she's asking for herself michelle bachman so now god has to honor it because she's michelle fucking bachman of course lord would you allow donald trump to have a second term as president of the united states this woman is just bonkers seriously i put out a video about her not long ago uh, look at her crazy eyes here like this isn't even the craziest they get in the video I put out, you could see some real just like just like wide open, just giant vacant fucking smile on her face. It, she's very, very weird. She's a very weird person. She's anti-vax and anti all kinds of really weird shit. And I honestly would be surprised if she's not a QAnoner. Haven't really been following that very much. Like, haven't really followed that aspect of it. Haven't heard much about what she says about Q and all that stuff. But I would truly be surprised if she's not a QAnoner. Anyway, let's keep reading this article and see what Beth Stoneburner had to say. Good thing she included her own name in there, or else God might not know who's talking. Just to repeat, Bachman already declared weeks ago that this was a done deal. So why the plea now? Because it's obvious that Trump fucking lost. That's why. And Bachman is just desperately clinging on to any hope she possibly can that maybe he gets a second term. Asking, begging, I'm begging God for help here. Is, it doesn't get much lower than that, honestly. Like, it should show how desperate she is that all she has left is begging God. Back to Beth Stoneburner. You could say that God has answered part of that prayer as far as delivering local races goes. The true vote happened. The results are in. They weren't stolen. Biden won. Democrats retain control of the House. They have a chance at flipping the Senate. It's a slim chance, though, man. If you're in Georgia, you got to get out and vote. Seriously, it's important. It's very important. Uh, but Beth Stoneburner has a good point here. The down-ballot races, the local, uh, state, and federal houses and legislatures, they were largely red. That is a sign that the country has moved to the right, but doesn't like Donald Trump. 
a lot of people voted Joe Biden and also down-ballot Republican. Beth Stoneburner says, who knows, maybe that deliverance and freedom will be granted through a Biden presidency. God works in mysterious ways, right? Honestly, I'm okay with the fact that a lot of people voted down-ballot Republican uh, as long as they voted for Biden. My big issue is with Trump. I mean, my biggest issue is with Trump. Obviously, I am liberal. I'm progressive. I was a Bernie Sanders supporter in 2016. I voted for Hillary. Didn't like it. Held my nose. Vomited in my mouth a little bit. But I did it. Because it was my civic duty. But Trump is one of the biggest dangers to democracy that I have ever faced in my lifetime at the very least. For that reason, I was significantly more concerned with getting Trump out than getting a liberal Senate and a liberal House. I I want a liberal Senate and House. I want Medicare for all. Need it. We need it. How many people die every year because they don't have health care? How many? There's a tangible number. There's a there's an actual number that we can calculate to figure out how many people are dying under this system every day. One is too many. You want to talk about death panels? We have death panels as a result of our current health care system. We need health care immediately, especially during a fucking pandemic. Holy shit, this is the most important moment in history to have universal health care. Truly, honestly, I believe none of that is as important as it was to get Donald Trump out of the presidency. It was the absolute top priority. So people can vote down ballot Republican if they want. I don't like that fact. I wish that they would have voted for more liberal, progressive people so that they would have health care. But getting Trump out was a huge fucking victory, and I can breathe a sigh of relief right now. The fight is not over. The fight does not end here, but we did win a victory. And to see people completely fucking disintegrating, like this woman right here. For this moment in the United States. It, it brings a tear to my eye, practically. I'm so fucking glad to see people disintegrating like this because it means we won, and she knows it. Let's take a look at Super Chats. Tyler Cross, can you set up a stream lab so we can send more money to you directly? I've had issues with many leftists recently. I'm fairly radical, but realistic too. Interesting. I'm not sure what stream labs is or stream lab. I know what stream labs is kind of. I'm not sure what stream lab is. Uh, isn't it just streaming software? Uh, if you wanted to donate directly, Patreon is probably the best way because it keeps it consolidated for tax purposes and all of that other junk. Patreon's probably the best. I don't know of a better way to do it than what I have set up currently, but I will look into it. Uh, maybe PayPal or something, I'm not sure, but I'll, I'll look into it. Thank you for the super chat, I appreciate that. Rayan, I'm, wait. Wait a minute, I've seen this name before and I feel like I fucked it up when I did last time, so let me think about this for a second. Um, Ray Anime Girl. Ray Anime Girl, is that right? Ray Anime Girl? I hope so. Uh, there's an anime chick in the profile picture, so I hope I got that right. Have you been watching the Friendly Atheist video series of him reading the Bible chapter by chapter? It's hilarious. I have actually watched a few of them. Not all of them and not in order. I didn't realize what it was until I was on like chapter like 32 or something. But I would like to go back from the beginning and listen all the way through. I, I've listened to a few of them. As many of you know, I run an Etsy store where I sell like 3D printed game cartridge stands and controller stands and stuff like that. Little knickknacks and doodads and patty wax and give a dog a bone so on and so forth and um while i'm i i basically buy 3d printing filament in 25 kilogram spools like 52 or 54 pound spools or something like that and i have to run them on a treadmill to unwind them onto smaller spools so it takes me a couple of hours uh every couple weeks so usually i'll listen to like hemant meta's chapter by chapter breakdown while I do that or something. 
or David Pakman, one of the two. Kenneth Saul, would you ever be willing to do a Zoom conversation with an evangelical pastor? I would consider it, but honestly, I don't, my policy is to not debate people and not to talk to people live. I prefer to use a format that allows me to think of a response and process it thoroughly before actually submitting that response like a reaction video for example or an email or a tweet or something like that the reason i prefer it that way rather than a debate style or a live style format is because i'm not very quick on my feet i don't debate i just feel like debates are charisma contests and i'm really not that charismatic I feel like I wouldn't be, I wouldn't get much done. Any conversation or debate that I have with somebody live, I would certainly lose. I'm sure of it. That's why I just don't do those. I would really rather just do it where I have a minute or two at least to think about a response and process what they have to say. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate that. Zolfner, Trump is daddy. This is getting creepy. Zolfner, only delusion here is that Democrats care for me. You know, I, I'm pretty confident you're a troll. I, I, I think you're a troll, but it's really hard to tell sometimes. Uh, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate that. Zolfner, Georgia needs to vote red. I don't know if you guys have been watching, but it sounds like there's a real movement right now in the Republican Party to not vote in Georgia because they feel like there's no point because Trump is like you know trump lost georgia there's no point that's fascinating to me I, I love watching the republican party disintegrate from within it it brings joy to my heart it's not about hating one specific party or being blue no matter who or any of that shit my real issue comes down to two main things if a republican came along who supported action on climate change more than the Democrat opponent did, I'd vote Republican. And if that Republican also supported LGBT rights more than the Democrat did, I would vote for the Republican. Absolutely no question. I wouldn't even have to think about it for a second. They support LGBT rights and climate change action. I'm vote. They have my vote, period. Problem is, it never plays out that way. It is always the Democrat who stands for those two things. It's always the Democrat who stands for pro-choice issues. It's always the Democrat who wants to support minorities and help rise people out of poverty. And it's always the Republican who wants to give massive fucking tax breaks to the rich. It always works out that way, every single fucking time. If it was ever reversed, if the Republican stood for those issues instead of the Democrat, I'd vote Republican. I'm not partisan. I want what's best for the country, and I just so happen to believe that tax breaks for the rich are fucking destructive for the country. Precious81, I have missed the stream. I agree sometimes it's better to engage in a discussion when it's civil. 100%. But even engaging in a civil discussion, I would still rather have that extra time to sit there and process what the person is saying. I'm not in it to come up with snappy comebacks. I, I really want to process what's being said. I want to think about it and give an honest, good response not the first thing that pops into my head. And that's required when you're having conversations. Or that's more specifically, that's required when you're having debates or even trying to deprogram somebody. That's required. MC Zephyr. Hey there, Telltale. I'm a big fan. Been watching your stuff for a couple years now. This is my first podcast. Well, thank you for coming. It's fucking awesome. Glad you're here. Me thinks your opinion of the Kwaku Dalen drama. I don't know Dalen or Kwaku. I, I know who Kwaku is. He's that Mormon dude. I don't know Dalen. Is that how it's pronounced? Let me look through here. I'm cute when I laugh. Thank you, Alexa Sick. I appreciate that. I'm not sure who Dalen is. I feel like Kwaku has historically been kind of a questionable character in the past, so... There's that. He's a Mormon. He's got a long way to go before he reaches, you know, enlightenment, if you will, or enlightenment values. He's still stuck in a cult. 
hopefully he finds his way out one day. Nancy Strickland, I enjoy your content and find your voice soothing. I think you're developing your own niche in the atheist community and I appreciate your style without debate. I appreciate that. I'm glad. I'm just really not a fan of debates. That's all. I love watching them. Don't get me wrong. Absolutely love watching debate. And I have no issue with other people debating at all. Like, I don't think it's like morally wrong to debate or whatever. Some people are like that. I don't think that. It's just not really my thing. Uh, Brian Lyon. Awesome name, by the way. I love that. Love the show channel. I'm also a Suboxin patient. I'm planning on tapering soon. Can you talk about how hard or easy it was for you to taper off? Have not tapered off. Still on it. I'll tell you this, though. The hardest part for me wasn't the pain involved because you can take a small enough amount. Like, you can, I mean, you can cut down by a small enough amount that you feel zero pain from cutting down. Like you can go from like an eight milligram strip to like, you can take like a 16th or a 32nd off of that and you won't feel the difference. And then in a week, do the same thing or in, even in two weeks. From my understanding, it takes about 23 days to physically feel normal after tapering. Um, day 11 and 12 is the peak of the pain. The, the worst part isn't the pain, though. You can taper a small enough amount where it's not really physically painful at all. The worst part is where your head goes. You just would do anything for more. It's like having gone two days without water or food and knowing that there's some in your pocket that you could take right now and there's nothing stopping you. You have it. It's on you. You can just put your hand in your pocket, pull it out, and it's over. Problem solved. That is the worst part. You have to have iron fucking will to get past that. Anyway, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. And good luck, dude. Seriously. I'm still struggling with it. We, I guess we both are. Heather Rose is our flyer. I think that's how it's pronounced. I love Dark Matter 2525's content, and as well as listening to the Thinking Atheist, Trey Crowder. I'm a trucker, so I spend a lot of time listening to a lot of different people. Our flyer is for Radio Flyer, like the wagon I'm pulling down the road. Okay, fucking awesome. That's really cool. I know, I like Dark Matter 2525 also. I watched like every one of his videos that he's ever put out, and I feel like there's some real profound shit in some of those videos. But since watching all of them, I kind of fell off. Haven't really watched his stuff much lately. But it is top tier, seriously. It would support him. In fact, I am a patron of his, I believe. Still, even though I haven't watched his stuff in months, because I support him. I think he's fucking awesome. Uh, the Thinking Atheist, Seth Andrews, pretty cool guy. I know him personally. Really cool guy. Been on his channel. Uh, Trey Crowder, I don't know personally, but I do know who that is. And he is pretty funny. I, I like him pretty well. Spend a lot of time listening to a lot of different people. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Well, thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate that. That's fucking awesome. Uh, let's see. Miss Triss Crimson 98 Drumpf only hearts us insofar as it enabled his greed. I completely agree with you on that point. Uh, he's only in it for himself. Anyways, so that's all I've got for you guys. Appreciate you guys coming and giving this a listen, and I will talk to you next week. If you like what I do and you want to make sure I can continue to do it, you can support me in a few ways. First, you can support me on Patreon. That's probably the best way. But if you want to get something back for your support, you can check out my Teespring. I sell all kinds of shirts and stickers and stuff on there. Second, you can support me by checking out my Etsy store. I sell 3D printed stands for every system from the original Nintendo to the Xbox One. And finally, if you want to support me in other ways, you can check me out on my other channels. I have the podcast channel, which is where I talk about whatever's on my mind. Politics, social issues, Issues, whatever. You can also find it everywhere podcasts can be found. Or you can check out the videos on my main channel where I focus on destructive cults. As it is with most channels these days, I rely on the support of viewers like you to keep my channel alive, so sharing my work is extremely helpful. Anyways, check me out in all those places if you haven't already. Thanks for listening, guys.